In a hidden bunker, the last leaders of Nazi Germany faced a harsh truth. Their empire was crumbling. It's early 1945, and Hitler, Goering, and Heinrichsi are racing against time. Can you imagine the pressure, the fear, and the chaos as they watch their world fall apart? We're about to take you back to those final desperate days. Picture Berlin, surrounded and under siege. The Allies are closing in, and inside that bunker, decisions are being made that will go down in history. How did these leaders react as their defeat became inevitable? Have you ever wondered what secrets were kept behind closed doors as the Third Reich was on the verge of collapse? What were the high-ranking officials discussing? What was their plan of action? It's a fascinating topic that still intrigues historians and researchers today. Join us as we delve into the intense, untold stories of these final moments. We'll explore the critical decisions and pivotal events from April to May 1945 that led to the fall of Nazi Germany. This isn't just a story of military strategy, it's a tale of desperation, denial, and the end of an infamous era. Get ready to uncover the secrets of a regime's last stand and witness the final chapter of a world-changing story. In the 11th hour of the Third Reich, as the Allies tightened their grip, General Gotthard Heinrichsi was summoned to take command of the German forces. It was late March 1945, and the situation was desperate. Known for his defensive prowess, Heinrichsi was the last hope to fortify the defenses and protect Berlin from the rapidly advancing Soviet army. Despite his earlier disagreements with Nazi policies and strategies, his expertise was now crucial. He took charge of the Army Group Vistula, facing the daunting task of shoring up the Oder River defenses. Historical records suggest that he immediately set to work, analyzing the terrain and the weakened state of his forces. His reputation for meticulous defense planning was well-earned, but even he knew the odds were grim. In a series of tense meetings in the Führer bunker, a claustrophobic air raid shelter beneath the Reich Chancellery Garden in Berlin, Heinrichsi laid out the dire circumstances. It was like a reality check for everyone there. Heinrichsi was trying to show them that they were in a tough spot with no easy way out. It was a tough pill to swallow, but he was the guy they turned to when things got terrible, and he did his best to prepare them for what was coming. Heinrichsi's report also highlighted the misallocated resources and strategic blunders that further compromised their position, such as diversifying elite panzer units to less critical areas. His insistence on the need for immediate and substantial reinforcement was met with empty promises and unrealistic optimism from the Nazi leadership. As he dissected the dire conditions, it became evident that the German army was a mere shadow of its former might, crippled by continuous attrition and an unstable rate of loss. The meetings, heavy with the weight of impending doom, were a stark testament to the crumbling facade of the Third Reich. Heinrichsi's candid and detailed assessments offered a valuable and poignant perspective on the final days of a regime that was teetering on the brink of total annihilation. Though often drowned out by denial and false hope, his voice resonated with the painful truth of a nation's ruinous end. His reports laid bare the full scope of the military disaster, marking the chapters of an empire's collapse with the sobering finality of hard-hitting evidence. He made an interesting point about a missed chance with Operation Serenade. It was a plan that might have given them a bit of a break from the Soviet forces, but it never happened. Heinrichsi was trying to show them how many chances they'd missed and how bad things had gotten. He warned everyone about the big Soviet attack coming their way. He tried to make them see that fighting would lead to more destruction and loss. But instead of listening, they just filled the room with empty promises of more troops and weapons that weren't coming. It's a story of missed chances and hard truths, a moment in time that could have gone differently if only they had listened. Picture Hitler in those final days, stuck in his bunker. Whenever Heinrichsi tried to tell him they were losing, Hitler brushed it off. He was in a bubble, insisting they'd pull off a miracle win. He kept talking about secret weapons and strategies that would turn everything around. But the truth was, the war was lost. His refusal to see led to terrible calls, making things worse for everyone involved. Now, Goering had his drama going on. He lived like a king and wasn't ready to give that up. He had this big showdown with Heinrichsi at his mansion, Karen Hall, which was as fancy as it gets. They sat down for lunch, but it wasn't friendly. Goering was trying to prove that he still had clout, making all sorts of claims about sending troops and how they'd still win. He even threatened Heinrichsi, saying he'd tell Hitler all kinds of nasty stuff about him. But despite all his talk, Goering was scared. He knew the Soviets were closing in, and his luxurious life was at risk. He even went as far as to blow up Karen Hall later so that the Soviets wouldn't get it. It shows just how desperate he was to cling to his grandiose lifestyle. This whole situation was a clash of egos and desperation. Hitler locked in his delusion of victory, and Goering trying to save his skin at all costs. It was like watching a slow-motion train wreck. Everyone could see the end, but these guys were too caught up in their worlds to do anything sensible about it. 
this wasn't just the downfall of a regime, it was the crumbling of all the illusions they built around themselves. As the climax of this tragic tale, their choices in those final days sealed their fate and left a mark on history that we're still discussing today. It's late March 1945, and the war's outcome is bleak for Germany. The Soviet forces relentlessly push towards Berlin, and the Western Allies aren't far behind. Heinrichsi, known for his defensive genius, has been tasked with holding the line at the Oder River, just about 60 miles from Berlin. He's been poring over maps, assessing troop strengths and the lack thereof, fully aware that the situation is dire. The tension between them exploded in a meeting, likely around early April 1945, just weeks before the fall of Berlin. Heinrichsi, with the weight of his impossible task, meets with Goering, perhaps at the latter's request, in a last-ditch effort to rally some support or at least make his grim assessments heard. Heinrichsi lays out the stark reality. Their forces are stretched thin, with poorly trained and ill-equipped soldiers facing a vastly superior Soviet army. He probably mentions the recent losses, the dwindling reserves, and the Allies having crossed the Rhine in the West, making significant advances. Goering, however, wasn't ready to concede. He boasts about the Luftwaffe's capabilities, makes promises of reinforcements, and perhaps even alludes to fantastical wonder weapons that will turn the tide of the war. But his words ring hollow, especially to someone as acutely aware of the ground realities as Heinrichsi. The argument escalated, with Goering threatening Heinrichsi with dire consequences should he fail or retreat. But by this time, Heinrichsi knew that any such threats were as empty as the promises of victory. On April 30, 1945, Adolf Hitler, the leader of Nazi Germany, took his own life in his underground bunker in Berlin as the Allied forces closed in on the city during the final days of World War II. Hitler had been in the Führer bunker for several months, isolated from the outside world and increasingly desperate as the war turned against him. Hitler died by suicide, along with his longtime companion Eva Braun and his kids. He used a combination of cyanide poisoning and a gunshot to the head to ensure his death. Eva Braun also ingested cyanide. Their bodies were discovered by Hitler's staff shortly after their deaths. The couple's remains were partially burned in an attempt to prevent their identification. Still, they were later positively identified through dental records. By early May 1945, things were falling apart for Germany. Berlin, which was the center of all the Nazi power, got taken over by the Soviet army. The city was in ruins, and the war in Europe was pretty much done. This ended the Third Reich, the big dream of Hitler and his team. And Goering, he had his drama. Once he was one of Hitler's closest guys, living it up and making big decisions. But when things got rough, he was captured by the American soldiers in Austria. That fancy lifestyle he had, gone. He went from being one of the most powerful men in Germany to just another war prisoner. Heinrichsi was pushed out of the picture and removed from his command just before the war ended. So this story, this big finale, it's about how all these prominent Nazi leaders, Hitler, Goering, and Heinrichsi faced the end. It's about how their decisions, especially Hitler's, led to the fall of a whole empire. It's a harsh lesson about what happens when leaders make bad choices, ignore the truth, and let their dreams of power lead to disaster. It's a reminder of the damage that war can do and how important it is to stay connected to reality. As we reflect on this period, a quote from Winston Churchill seems to fit the context well. Those who fail to learn from history are condemned to repeat it. This story of the Third Reich's final days is more than history. It teaches the importance of leadership, responsibility, and the harsh truths of ambition and war. It reminds us all to remember the past, learn from it, and ensure that such destruction never happens again.